Aleph, Bet, Bet, Gimel, Dalit, Hey, Vav, Sein, Chet, Tet, Yud, Kaf, Chaf, Lamed, Mem, Nun, Samech, Ein, Pei, Fet, Sadi, Kuf, Reish, Shun, Sen, Tav, Now I think I've said enough. Welcome to another in our series, From the Aleph Bet, a series for anyone of any age who wishes to learn how to read and understand Hebrew, especially the Hebrew involved in the experience of Judaism here in America. I'm Mark Golub. It's always wonderful to be with you. And we're at the holiday season of Passover. In many ways, I feel Passover is the most wonderful time for the experience of family Judaism outside of Shabbat. Of course, Shabbat is the quintessential Jewish family moment. But outside of Shabbat, it's all about Passover. Hanukkah is wonderful too, though Hanukkah is really geared towards children. And Passover is geared to the entire Jewish family. Again, for many of you who will be celebrating Passover, Relatives come from all over to some central home to celebrate Seder night, two Seders in some families. And there's a wonderful opportunity, not only to experience the most wonderful moments of the Jewish tradition, but also moments of family togetherness. Sometimes we see people we haven't seen for an entire year. And so we thought it would be nice to take a look at some of the words associated with the holiday of Passover. Some of the Hebrew that you might use in the Passover Seder, especially the words involved in the most well-known, the quintessential moment of the Passover Seder, the four questions. But let's take a look first at the actual word for Passover in Hebrew and see if you can read it and pronounce it properly. Here you see a two-syllable word. It's a word you know. We've studied this word already. The first syllable is pe, and the second syllable is sach, mitsuyan. And you put the word together, and you get pesach. Words that begin with a segol tend to be accented on the first syllable, so the word is pronounced pesach, with the accent on the first syllable. And Pesach means two things. First of all, it means the holiday of Passover. It's the Hebrew for the holiday. And it also refers to the lamb, what's sometimes called the Paschal lamb, the lamb that was to be slaughtered, eaten, and the blood of which was to be placed on the doorpost the night of the Passover, the night of the exodus from Egypt. And I've taught you before that all Hebrew words are built on three-letter roots. So the three-letter root of the word Pesach is Pei, Samech, Chet, Mitsuyan. And the root, Pei, Samech, Chet, always has to do with passing over, to pass over something. So what Hebrew did was take the verb to Passover, make a noun out of it, as in the word Pesach, and so you now understand that the holiday of Pesach is built upon the verb to pass over the critical event of the story where God passes over any home, whether it was Jewish or Egyptian, according to the Midrash. Wherever there was an Israelite home or an Egyptian home with blood on the door, God passes over, and of course that family is spared and becomes part of the Jewish people journeying from Egyptian slavery through the Red Sea to Har Sinai, Mount Sinai, to become the Jewish people. Here's another very important word for the holiday of Passover, a word you've heard many times, but here is the word in Hebrew. How many vowels in this word? Three is correct. And if there are three vowels in a word, there are three syllables in a word. There's always a one-to-one -one relationship between vowels and syllables in a Hebrew word. The first syllable is ha, mitsuyan. The second syllable, ga, 
Mitsuyan, and the third syllable, Da, Mitsuyan. Can you put this three-syllable word together to pronounce this word, which is again an important word for the holiday of Passover? If you said Haggadah, with the accent on the last syllable, Haggadah, you are correct. By the way, we're used to calling it the Haggadah, but it's actually Haggadah in Hebrew. And Haggadah comes from the Hebrew verb to tell or to recite. In traditional literature, Haggadah or the Agadah very often rep- uh, applies to all of the Midrash that describes the Jewish insights into life and the interpretations of the Torah, sort of like another word for Midrash. But Agadah and Haggadah is the book that contains the story of the exodus from Egypt and all of the blessings and the actual service of the Seder. And actually, a Seder is a Jewish service held on the first night of Passover and on the second night of Passover. So lo and behold, the Haggadah is the book which has the entire order of the Seder service, and it's what we read on Passover. And again, in modern Jewish life, one can, one can find a Haggadah with almost any orientation you wish. There are so many beautiful Haggadot now created with different perspectives, beautiful, beautiful illustrations. So you try to find one for your family that reflects the Jewish approach to the holiday of Passover and the story of the exodus from Egypt that your family somehow embraces. And very often, a family's Haggadah is one that they've used for years and years and years. It almost doesn't matter what it says, whether it's the, you know, the Maxwell Haggadah that was put out many, many years ago by Maxwell Coffee, or whether it's one of the modern Haggadot that's been produced, or whether it's one of the beautifully calligraphed Haggadot. The Haggadah is central to the Seder. That's what we read together, and that's where we find all of the prayers and the blessings and the story of, um, of Passover. So we so far have seen the word Pesach and Haggadah, but now we go to the most well-known moment of the Seder. It doesn't mean it's the most important moment, but it's certainly the most well-known moment. It's called the four questions, the um, kashas as sometimes it's called in Yiddish. And uh, I'd love to show you some of the Hebrew that's involved in the four questions, which traditionally the four questions are recited by the youngest child who's able to recite the four questions at the Passover Seder. Here are the four questions. In Hebrew, the four questions are known very often as the manishtana, the first two words of the four questions. And we've put them up on the screen for you. Manishtana. And it begins the very well-known line, manishtana halayla hazeh mikol halelot. Let's take a look at how that line, the most well-known of all the lines of the four questions, what does that line actually mean? You've learned before the word ma. And the best way to understand what ma means is it's an interrogative. It's a question mark. If you want to express a question in Hebrew, very often you simply begin with the word ma. And so sometimes we translate it as how or what, or why. And that's how the four questions begin, with this interrogative. And then comes this word. See if you can read it. How many vowels? Three is correct. One under the nun, one under the tuff, one under the second nun. What's under the shin? Yes, it's the shva. And remember, a shva is never counted as a vowel. So what's the first of the three syllables of this word? The entire syllable is nish, mitsuyan. We add a letter over the silent shva to the letter and vowel in front of it to create a syllable. The first syllable is nish. The second syllable, ta. And the third syllable, 
Na Mitsuyan. Pronounce the whole word. Nishtana Mitsuyan. Pronounce the first two words together. Ma Nishtana Mitsuyan. And the question is, what does Nishtana mean? It's very interesting. The Hebrew root of Nishtana are the letters Shin, Nun, He. And they have something to do with the idea of changing or being different. Changing or being different. And so now we take the two words, Ma Nishtana, and the question is, what's the best translation of the words Ma Nishtana? And I want to remind you, it's very difficult, it's almost inappropriate to try to do a literal translation from one language to another. Yes, if it's a noun, the word table, shulchan. Okay, a shulchan in Hebrew tends to be what we mean by a table in English. A kise in Hebrew tends to be a chair in English. Nouns are simple, but when you get to concepts and ideas, it's very difficult to translate literally from one language to another. It's all idiomatic. And we must ask ourselves, what is one language trying to express in ideas, and how does one express that same idea in a different language? So we look at the Hebrew and ask, what is the Hebrew trying to say? What's the concept involved? And what's the best way to express that concept in English? And the best way to translate manishtana, and there's no one way. You must find a way that, in essence, you believe expresses what the Hebrew is trying to say. Very often we hear the translation from manishtana, why is this night different from all the other nights? As if manishtana means, why is there a difference? But it's not really the Hebrew. It really is, what is the difference? What is the difference? How is this night different? from all the other nights. How is the difference expressed? Manishtana. How is the difference? What is the difference? And now let's look at the rest of the phrase. Most of the words you know here. The word Lila. We studied that word before. Lila simply means night, Mitsuyan. You remember Lila means night. And Halila would be the night. Ha in front of a word, the he with a patach, is the definite article, the in English. So halayla means the night. But notice that it's halayla hazeh. What does the word zeh mean? Zeh means this. It specifies whatever noun the word zeh is modifying. So it's almost as if the word night, Lila, is being given special emphasis this particular night. And in Hebrew it's expressed with a he, the definite article in front of a noun, followed by the adjective ze, and it will have a ha in front of it to agree with the noun. So it's halayla haze means this night, but it's even stronger than this night. It's this particular night. This night. <laughs> So the question is, Manishtana halayla hazeh, mikol halilot. Lelot, simply the plural of lila. Whenever you see ot at the end of a word, it means the word is plural. So lelot would be mitsuya, nights. And mikol is the word that means from all. Mi meaning from, the prefix mi, from, and call is the word that means all. Mi call from all. Mi call halelot from all the nights. And now we can read the entire phrase. Ma nishtana halayla hazeh, mi call halelot. And I suggest that the easiest way, the best way to translate this is, how is this night different 
from all the other nights. The word other is understood. How is this night different from all the other nights? What is the difference between this night and all the other nights? And we call this the four questions. In reality, it's one question and four answers. What we really have after the Manish Tana line is the answer to how is this night different from all the other nights. It's very interesting. In the Haggadah, there's no answer to the four questions. After a child recites the four questions, if you continue to read the Haggadah, there's no place where the questions are answered. Why? Because in reality, they're not questions. They are four answers to the primary question, what's the difference between this night and all the other nights? How is this night different from all the other nights? And I'm not suggesting we change the name from the four questions to the four answers. It is so ingrained in our tradition that we see this as four questions that reveal the way in which Passover is celebrated as a holy, unique, and separate night. But you understand that from the Hebrew, it really says, what's the difference? And now here's the answer, four answers. And each answer tells us how this night is unique as we celebrate it together in the midst of people we love very, very much. So let's take a look now one by one at the four questions and the four answers. And we'll take the critical words of each of the four questions. First, this word here. How many vowels? Two, correct. A very easy word to read. The first syllable, cha, with the chet, the slight clearing of the throat. And the second syllable, mates. Or some people would pronounce it mets. Chametz, chametz. And in English, it tends to be called chometz. What is chometz? This is chometz. Yeah. Anything that has leaven in it and rises, like bread or cake or pizza or spaghetti, it really means, however, any food that is forbidden on Passover. Any food forbidden on Passover because it has leaven, because it could rise, is forbidden on Passover, as is any food that may have come in contact with leaven. And that's why you'll see traditional Jews go out of their way to buy foods especially prepared for Passover, which have not had any contact with chumetz. Normally chumetz is perfectly acceptable to eat, but not on Passover. So chumetz is forbidden food on Passover. And what is permitted, what is the food of Passover? In fact, we are commanded to eat this food on Passover. It is, of course, matzah, mitsuyan. Two-syllable word, matzah. Many people say matzah. That's okay. But the way to pronounce it in Sephardic Hebrew would be matzah. And matzah is unleavened bread. It is, again, the quintessential food for Passover. And in many ways, Passover is actually celebrated as an eight-day festival, and it's called Chag HaMatzot, the holiday of matzah. And while one has a Seder on the first or first and second nights of Passover, one is commanded to eat matzah for the entire seven or eight nights of Passover that one celebrates. Matzah, what distinguishes ultimately the holiday of Passover, and that is the mitzvah of Pesach, to eat matzah. So let's now look at the first question answer of the four questions. It begins with Shebechol, for on all, halelot. You already know, lelot is the plural of Lila. Shebechol halelot, on all the nights, anu ochlin. And here you see 
a picture of Anu Ochlin. Yes, we eat. Ochlin being plural. Anu Ochlin, we eat. And then the words you now know. Chametz u matzah. The word u means either and or it can be translated as or. And most of the time you see a translation, it'll say chametz or matzah. For on all the nights, meaning on every normal night, we eat, anu ochlin, either chametz u matzah. We eat chametz and we also eat matzah. Both are permitted and we eat, either when we're in the mood to eat, on all the other nights. We eat chametz and we eat matzah. Halayla hazeh, you already know halayla hazeh means on this night, this particular night of Seder, of Pesach, kulo matzah. Kulo literally means all of it is matzah, unleavened bread. And the sense of it is we can only eat unleavened bread. So on all the other nights, we eat either chametz or matzah on the night of Pesach, the Seder night, kulo matzah, only matzah. That's one of the ways in which this night, the night of the Seder, is different from all the other nights. We only eat matzah. And of course, the reason we eat matzah on Seder night and then throughout the holiday of Pesach is to remind us of slavery and poverty since matzah was the bread of affliction, the bread of poor people in the land of Egypt when we were slaves in Egypt. And it also reminds us that the night of the Passover was a night of haste where the Israelites did not have time to let bread rise but basically cooked it in a hurry. The images, they placed it on their backs and raced out of Egypt and the sun beat down and created the flat matzah. And it's not that matzah was created on the night of the Passover. It's that matzah was the food that poor people, that slaves ate in Egypt. We go on to number two. The key word for you to know is this word here, Two vowels, therefore two syllables. Maror, Mitsuyan. Ma roar. Notice the first resh does not have a silent shva, so we would not add the resh to the first syllable ma. You would not say mar is the first syllable, but ma roar. What is ma roar? Yes, you see a picture right here. It's horseradish or anything that represents bitter herbs. And often you'll see a plate of horseradish on a Seder table representing the bitter herbs, the maror, reminding us, of course, of the bitterness of slavery in Egypt. So the sentence goes, Shebechol halilot, for on all the nights, Anu ochlin, you know that, we eat. She'ar yirakot, she'ar yirakot refers to all kinds of green vegetables, basically all kinds of vegetables. Halayla hazeh, but on this very night, maror. We go out of our way to eat bitter herbs. Notice it does not say kulo maror. It's not that we only eat bitter herbs. We also eat other kinds of vegetables. But we make sure we eat maror to remember the bitterness of slavery. Number three. Here's a word I'd love you to learn. One vowel, therefore one syllable. Try to pronounce it. Ain is correct. Ain. And here's the symbol for what ain means. Ain is basically a negative. It takes whatever you're saying and makes it into a not, a negative. It's no or don't or not when you add this word to a verb. Here's your next word. How many vowels? Three vowels is correct, so there are three syllables. Can you tell me the first syllable of this word? And notice the second letter, the tet, has a silent schwa under it. So you add the tet to the preceding letter and vowel, the syllable ma, to get the first syllable, mat, mitsuyan, mat, 
Second syllable is easy. B. And the third syllable is easy. Lean. Mitsuyan. Put the word together. Mat be lean. Mitsuyan. And mat be lean has to do with this picture here. Yes, dunking, dipping. Mat be lean is to dunk or to dip. Mitsuyan. So now let's look at the actual sentence. Shebechol halilot for in all the nights, ain anu mat bilin. We do not dip afilu pa'am echad. Pa'am echad means one time. Pa'am echad, one time. We do not dip afilu even pa'am echad, one time. Take a look at the word afilu. Notice that under the aleph there is a chataf patach. It's a shiva with a slight ah added to it, but it's not a syllable of its own. It's added to the following letter and vowel. So the first syllable would be afi, mitsuyan, afi. And the second syllable, lu, mitsuyan. Put the word together, afilu. And the accent is on the fi, afilu. Afilu pa'am echat. We do not dip even one time. Instead, we dip shtei fi'amim. Shtei means two, and the im ending at the end of a Hebrew word is also the plural ending. So shtei fi'amim is two times. Halayla hazeh. Shtei fi'amim. So on all the other nights, we do not dip food into food even one time, but on the Seder night, there are two separate dippings. The parsley, the karpas, into the salt water. The karpas representing spring, the salt water representing the tears of slavery. And there's a mixing or a dipping of the charoset, which represents the mortar, that the Israelites used to make bricks when they were slaves in Egypt, with the maror, which you already know is the bitter herbs, to create what's known as the Hillel sandwich, that which is eaten just before the meal is served as part of the Seder service. So the third of the four questions is, Shebechol halelot, ein anu matbilin, Afilu pa'amechat. On all the other nights, we do not dip even one time. Halayla hazeh. This particular night, shtei fi'amim. There are two dippings. And now the fourth question or fourth answer. Here are words you need to know. Take a look at this word. How many vowels? Hopefully you said Two, the cholam male after the yud, and the hirik under the vet. So there are two syllables. There is a silent shva under the shin, so we add the shin to the preceding letter and vowel to create the first syllable. The first syllable would be yosh mitsuyan, and the second syllable vin mitsuyan. Put the word together. Yoshvin, Mitsuyan, Yoshvin, and here's a picture of someone Yoshvining. <laughs> it's a picture of someone sitting. Yoshvin is plural of sitting. And the other word you need to know is this word here. How many vowels? Two again, Mitsuyan. This time there's a pronounced shva under the mem, since the shva is always pronounced under the first letter of a word, i, as in the word fish, but it's not counted as a vowel. A shva is never counted as a vowel, so the mem will be added to the following letter and vowel to make the first syllable. What would the first syllable be? Misu, mitsuyan, misu, misu, mitsuyan. Second syllable, easy. Bean is correct. Put the word together. Misubin, Mitsuyan. 
And here are people misubining. Yes, this is the word in Hebrew for to recline. So you see people here reclining. And finally, one more grammatical thing for you to understand about Hebrew. Here are two words. Can you read them? The first word, one syllable. Bain is correct. And here is a two-syllable word. Uvein, Mitsuyan. Bain, Uvein. And Bain, Uvein in Hebrew is the way we say in English, either or. Bain actually means between. But when you use Bain and then Bain again, it's the English equivalent of either or. So let's look at now the fourth of the four questions. Shebechol halilot, for in all the nights, anu ochlin, we eat, ben yoshvin, either sitting, uvein mesubin, or reclining. We eat, either sitting or reclining. Halayla hazeh, on this particular night, kulanu, again from the word kol, but kulanu means all of us, misubin. We all recline, symbolic of being free men and women. Freedom, the message of Passover. Kulanu misubin, mitsuyan. We recline, all of us, at the Seder table, free men and women. Again, the Seder is patterned after the Roman banquet, the Romans being the quintessential free people of the era in which the Seder was created, and therefore there's a tendency to pick up the symbolism that represents a lovely banquet when free men and women could celebrate with their families. Except for the Seder, every part of it has an overlay of Jewish symbolism that has to do with values and helping us to relive that moment when our ancestors, our people, when we left Egypt and went from slavery in Egypt to freedom at Mount Sinai. So there you have the four questions. Let's go through them together now, just so you can see them read, and then I'm going to chant them for you the way the traditional chant is done. But here is the Hebrew reading of the four questions. Manishtana halayla hazeh mikol halelot. How is this night different from all the other nights? Shebechol halelot anu ochlin chametz umatzah. Halayla hazeh kulo matzah. For in all the nights we eat either foods with leaven or we eat unleavened bread, matzah. But on this night, we only eat matzah. There is no chametz, no leavened food. Number two, shebechol halelot, anu ochlin, she'ar yirakot, halala hazeh, maror. For in all the other nights, we eat all the green vegetables, the rest of the green vegetables. But this night, we eat bitter herbs. Number three, Shebechol Halelot, Ein Anu Matbilin, Afilu Pa'amechat. Halayla Hazeh, Shte Fe'amin. For on all the other nights we do not dip even one time, but this night we dip twice. And the fourth, Shebechol Halelot, Anu Ochlin, Bein Yoshvin, Uvein Mesubin, Halayla Hazeh, Kulanu misubin. For on all the other nights we eat either sitting or reclining. This night all of us recline. So there's a melody that people now sing for the four questions. Manishtana halayla hazeh Mikol halelot Mikol halelot Shebechol halelot 
אנו אוכלים חמץ ומצה, חמץ ומצה. הלילה הזה, הלילה הזה, כולו מצה. הלילה הזה, הלילה הזה, כולו מצה. שבכל הלילות אנו אוכלים שאר ירקות. שאר ירקות, הלילה הזה, הלילה הזה, מהרור. הלילה הזה, הלילה הזה, מהרור. שבכל הלילות אין אנו מטבילין אפילו פעם אחת, אפילו פעם אחת. הלילה הזה, הלילה הזה, שתי פעמים, הלילה הזה, הלילה הזה, שתי פעמים, שבכל הלילות אנו אוכלים בין יושבין ובין מסובין, בין יושבין ובין מסובין. הלילה הזה, הלילה הזה, כולנו מסובין. הלילה הזה, הלילה הזה, כולנו מסובין. Now that's the song, the melody, that is sung in many people's homes at the moment when the four questions are done. But there's also a chant, a traditional chant that I love, that I wish all of you know, whether you use it for your Seder or not, whether your children know it or not, at least hear it and be familiar with it. Because in many ways, it's the way the four questions were meant to be recited as a Talmudic chant. And here's how the chanting of the four questions goes. Ma nishtana halayla hazeh mikol halaylot shebechol halaylot anu ochlin chameitz umatzah halayla hazeh kulaho matzah shebechol halaylot anu ochlin she'ar yirakot halayla hazeh maror שבכל הלילות אין אנו מטבילין אפילו פעם אחת. הלילה הזה שתי פעמים. שבכל הלילות אנו אוכלים בין יושבין ובין מסובין. הלילה הזה כולנו מסובין. The chant of the four questions. Anyway. Whether you sing it, you chant it, you read it, you have your own melody. It's such a beautiful part of the Seder night. And again, in many homes, the youngest child able to ask the four questions does so. In my own home, every child who wishes to recite the four questions, starting with the youngest up to those who are not yet bar or bat mitzvah, they all get a chance to recite the four questions. I don't care if we do it seven times. Every child has the chance for one moment, all eyes are on that child, and the child does it terrific, does it almost terrific. It's the most wonderful chanting of the four questions ever done in the world. And everybody cheers and screams, hooray, we love you, marvelous job. It's really very beautiful. Every child at um, our Seder gets a present for Passover after the Afi Koman, the dessert where one hides the matzah and then it's found, and in theory, whoever finds the matzah has to, you must redeem the matzah from the person who finds it. So in our family, we break the matzah into as many pieces as there are children, and all the children go out of the room. We hide the matzah all over the room, and in they come, and I have a song that I made up as the kids, you know, look for the for the Afi Komen. Where did my father hide the Afi Komen? Where did my father hide the Afi Komen? Did he hide it? And then we give a hint. Until all the kids have found their own little Afi Komen in a napkin. And then every child receives a present, including our adult children. They don't have to find the Afi Komen. They can sit and sing the song. But all of our children, if they're a child of any adult 
at that uh, Seder, they get a present, a CD, a book. The little ones get presents that they would enjoy playing with. Anyway, my point is that Passover is the quintessential night of family. Family gets together and celebrates this wonderful moment of Jewish identity, of Jewish becoming. And at that moment during the Seder, when we're all celebrating again the birth of the Jewish people, it's the moment of the four questions that in some way symbolizes best in one moment the entire Seder night. It is my hope on behalf of all of us here at Shalom TV that you will have a wonderful Seder, perhaps two Seder nights, whatever your tradition is in your family, where you'll be able to spend a moment of real joy and love and happiness and sharing and Jewishness together. And that in some small way, being able to see and understand the four questions in Hebrew will make that moment for some of you even more special. I hope you enjoyed that lesson of From the Aleph Bet. And remember, you can download lesson sheets and worksheets for every lesson of this series free of charge. Just visit the JBS website homepage at jbstv.org and click on the program icon for From the Aleph Bet. And then click on the very first option, From the Aleph Bet Hebrew Study Sheets. And for anyone who can send JBS a tax-deductible donation of $180 or more, we'll be pleased to send you the entire 20 program series one of From the Aleph Bet on DVD, complete with a CD of lesson sheets and worksheets. JBS, expanding Jewish understanding, celebrating all things Jewish. Be well, my friends. Aleph, bet, bet, gimel, dalet, hey, bob, sein, chet, tet, yud, kof, kof, lamed, men, nun, samer, hain, pei, fit, sadi, kuf, reish, shun, sin, tof, now I think I've said enough. <laughs>